Making tech videos isn't one size fits all. From slapping a smartphone on a gimbal to tricking out a whole warehouse studio, there are a thousand different ways to YouTube. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is how I do it. Introducing How Mr. Mobile Works, Episode 1, The Gear. Even though most of my videos are shot in and around the Mr. Mobile studio, the whole process actually starts quite a ways away, in one of several coffee shops and cafes in the greater Boston area. This is the scripting phase, where I convert my collected notes or editorial thoughts into a narrative that's hopefully enjoyable and as accurate as possible by the time it gets to your ears. This takes at least two revisions, one for fact-checking, where the larger Mobile Nations team sometimes helps me out, and one I call the hyperbole pass, where I remove the kind of sensational or over-the-top verbiage that the lazy writer in me always tries to sneak in. Now, once I think I'm close to a final version of the script, I'll read it with an eye toward what camera shots I need to include, and I compile those notes into a separate shot list. Depending on the subject and complexity of the video, the whole writing process takes between two and six hours. And I do this on a variety of machines, from the iPad Pro to the Google Pixel to the Microsoft Surface Book to the MacBook Pro I'll talk about a little later. Next, it's back to the studio to do the actual business of filming. For indoor shots, I use two main cameras. The Sony a7S II is my weapon of choice. Most of the studio footage you see in the finished videos comes from this camera, and one of two lenses, a 2470 f4 for medium to long shots, and an f2.8 macro lens for extreme close-ups. If I need additional b-roll, I enlist the aid of my capable producer, Mr. Justice. He uses a Panasonic Lumix GH4 mounted to the same tripod, but with a slightly different fluid head. When a shot calls for something a little more special than your typical pan, I get some help from a friend called Edelkrone. This is the large version of Edelkrone's professional slider, which combined with the target and action modules gives me a lot of options for dolly shots, push-ins, and even barrel rolls. It's taken some time with this equipment to start getting it right. If you look back at some of my early videos, you'll notice a sickly blue-green tint to the displays of phones I was filming. That's because these old studio lights, which I picked up from a friend in the theater business, came with very warm fluorescent bulbs that messed with my white balance. So every bulb in every light needed to be swapped out for cooler ones. As for the Edelkrone, it's much too heavy for my standard tripod, so I needed to get an entirely new tripod to accommodate it. And the target and action modules are finicky and fragile. Several times I've had to send them in for repairs. And for all the capabilities of my A7S II, it's lacking important basics, like a reversible viewfinder. For a long time, I had to use Sony's cumbersome remote app just to be able to film myself. Nowadays, I use an external monitor from Small HD, which is great, but super expensive. And it adds another set of batteries that need to be constantly kept on charge. Oh, and you know how commenters are always cracking wise about how I need to cool it on the caffeine because my hands are always shaking? It, well, for one thing, that's kind of true. I do go to Dunkin' Donuts a lot. But mainly, it's because when you're filming by yourself, there's really no comfortable way to hold anything. So maybe it's no surprise that I love filming outside the studio, because all it takes is a smartphone and this little guy. It's called the Osmo Mobile from DJI, and it'll stabilize almost any smartphone, even if your diet is 80% coffee. With the base attachment, it'll stand up by itself so you can go hands-free with your filming and even do some pan and tilt stuff. Shooting with a smartphone has its limitations, but from filming a walk around town with my spectacles to documenting a Maven Cadillac to bringing you footage from the biggest tech trade show in America, the Osmo Mobile has been an absolute godsend. I love it. Once all the camera work is done, I give the script one more pass to include any straggling impressions I picked up during the filming process, and then it's into the sound booth to lay down the voiceover. I record my audio on a C414 XLS microphone plugged into a Tascam USB interface that talks to a simple program called Sound Studio. This is the same software I used for six years in my previous job as a voiceover artist, and it's actually the same sound booth, too. More on that in the Mr. Mobile Studio Tour, coming soon. 
After the voiceover is cut, I import everything into my video editor of choice, Final Cut Pro, which I run on a 2015 MacBook Pro Retina, because I still use things like SD card slots, and full-size USB ports, and MagSafe, none of which are on the new MacBooks, which annoyed me so extremely that I almost jumped ship to Adobe Premiere so I could use a Microsoft Surface Book, but I just love Final Cut Pro so much that I didn't. So yes, I use a two-year-old computer. I'm not too sad about it. And yes, I write, shoot, and edit the bulk of Mr. Mobile videos myself. The one thing I'm afraid I can't take credit for, though, those iconic thumbnails. Those are the work of Jose Negron on the Mobile Nations team, and they're awesome. Meanwhile, across the room, Mr. Justice is cutting together social video. These are the shorter, squarer videos you may have seen on the iMore, Android Central, or Mr. Mobile Facebook pages. That's when he's not saddled with the frustrating task of trying to keep the acoustic foam from falling off the walls. All told, it takes between one and three hours of work to make one complete minute of Mr. Mobile video. That's just in the Boston studio. Across the continent, there are folks at Mobile Nations working to get me in touch with companies I want to cover, trade shows I want to attend, vendors for Mr. Mobile shirts and stickers, and sponsors for giveaways that, yes, will be coming sometime in 2017. I feel like I should close by saying that you don't need all this gear to be a successful YouTuber. Over the past decade, my father and I built a sizable following using little more than camcorders and GoPros at our scale model project, Rapid Nadion. But if you do want to take your camera game to the next level with some of this stuff, check out the Studio Kit on Mr. Mobile's kit.com page, linked in the description, and stay tuned for the studio tour and other behind-the-scenes coverage in the next installments of How Mr. Mobile Works. Finally, you can of course hit me directly with your questions in the comments, right below that subscribe button that keeps Mr. Mobile running. As always, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.